Hello folks and welcome to yet another episode of the Tesla project and in this episode we are going to be having our first look at the Tesla charger. Now when I say the Tesla charger what I mean is the 10 kilowatt onboard uh, Gen 2 um, AC charger as fitted uh, to the Tesla Model S. Uh, it may be fitted to the model the model x uh, i'm not sure but this one that i have came from the model s so a <clears throat> little bit of background before we get into too much of the nitty gritty uh, the charger has been available now from crash cars for you know quite a few years uh, but to the best of my knowledge and the best of internet searching that I can do, um, it hasn't been effectively made uh, workable. So it's not like you can just pick one up from, from eBay, buy a little box that you just plug in and basically make it charge your car. Um, and the best explanation that I found uh, as to why that's not the case came on one of the Tesla forums uh, from Jason Hughes. And the description that he gave of it uh, is that the charger is highly integrated into the car's systems. Uh, so for example, uh, the charger wants to control the coolant flow rate uh, through itself. Now, you could, of course, fool that with the CAN messages, but it turns out that the charger has a flow meter, and if it sends out a CAN command, let's say, to throttle the pump up to 10 litres a minute, and then doesn't see the 10 litres a minute coming through, it's going to fault out. So there's that amongst a lot of other things that would need to be uh, fooled or would need to be generated by some kind of a third party controller in order to make the charger work. Now, so what I've done is I've basically uh, decided straight off the bat I'm not going to even try that. Um, the other option that you would have then would be to reprogram it. Uh, but that again is not something that I would be really qualified to do. That's some pretty heavy software work uh, that would need to be done to make that happen. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to try to get around the problem. Now, not sure again whether this is going to work or not. Uh, this is going to be just purely uh, exper experimental. With the, with the emphasis on the mental part. Now, what I'm gonna show you in a minute is the charger here on the bench. But before I do, I'll just describe briefly what goes on here. So the 10 kilowatt charger is made up of three, I would assume around three and a half kilowatt uh, charger blocks. And each of these charger blocks connect back to a central logic board. And the central logic board then connects to the outside world. So it connects to the cars, CAN bus and um, charging port and various, various other bits. So what I'm going to try to do is to see if we can jump over the internal logic board and command the individual charger bricks themselves to you know, put out current, basically. Uh, again, not sure how this is going to work out, but let's go have a look. I'll show you what I've learned so far. All right, so we're at the bench here, and I have taken the cover off the charger here, removed a lot of kind of, you know, support hardware for these cables. Um, so straight away, you can see that we have three almost identical uh, charger kind of power units here, for want of a better word. And they're all encompassed in this scary goo. This type here is really scary. It's kind of alien. Um, and then up at this end, this is where 
the mains comes in. So the mains comes into each uh, power unit here. You'll see we have six wires, um, a phase and ground uh, for each of the bricks. At the far end, you'll see the red and the black wires. That's where the DC comes out. Again, to another uh, six-way power type connector. Now, down here is really the business end. This is the logic board. And it connects to the power units uh, by way of a 24-pin uh, JST CPT uh, socket here, which is the very same as used on the large drive unit logic board. And it then connects to the outside world uh, via these two connections here by this kind of a multi-way connector. So you can literally just plug the thing out. Um, this is probably a 2 or a 2.5 millimeter pitch connector. Probably 2.5. So let me just make sure that's back in there. Yeah, so what I did then was we have a look and don't know how this is going to come out, but you're going to see that <coughs> excuse me, each of the bricks has a um, a 10-way JST CPT uh, plug. Now we only actually use, um, let me see here, I'm going to tell you guys lies now probably, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, sorry, a 12-way JST CPT, yeah. And four of the ways are shorted out. And you'll see on this one, two of them are shorted. If I remove the logic board again here, sorry. You will see on the middle unit, only one of them, or sorry, the top one, is shorted and in here on the first one the bottom set of terminals is shorted so this is obviously some kind of a coding system that sets an address or an id or some kind of a communication for these power units now let me just plug that back in there again okay there we go now so that leaves eight wires from each of the power units to go back to the 24 way. So you can very easily see 3 8 are 24. So we have eight wires from each of the power units going to the, um, the logic board. And you will see that each kind of, each cluster of eight wires has got two of them which are twisted pair. And that kind of gave the game away a little bit. So with some probing, uh, we found that these are a high-speed CAN network at 500k uh, baud rate. And we have tapped into that CAN network on the first power stage here with one of our Arduino Deweys. So before we do anything else, let me just show you here um, on the bench or on my desk or whatever you want to call it uh, what I've learned so far so as I say each of the each of the charger power units are broken up into three eight-way uh, conne connections so basically if we look at this one here we see pin 22 is can high and pin 10 is can low uh, pin 24 is a 5 volt supply from the logic board and pin tw uh, 12 is a 12 volt supply from the logic board and pin 23 is, is a power ground. Now this leaves pin 9, 11 and 21. We don't really know what they do. So just a little bit of reverse engineering, just measuring voltages and stuff. Pin 11 generates a climbing uh, voltage. So when you first power on, it starts at zero and ramps up to 0 0.3 volts um, from the power stage and measures a uh, 46 millivolts, which is pretty much ground uh, when the charger power stage is un unplugged. Pin nine does something similar. It's a slowly rising analog uh, voltage when the power is supplied and pin 21 doesn't look to be doing anything at the minute it seems to be just flo floating um, around zero volts so let's have a quick look 
at what happens visually uh, when we just apply power. Now, when I say apply power, what I mean is we're just applying 12 volts on ground uh, to two pins on the external connector, pin 1 and pin 7, uh, which would be the permanent 12-volt uh, feed from the car's 12-volt battery. So if we just apply power, we get a little bit of a light show. We get a red light on the logic board. We get some red lights on the uh, charger power units themselves. It lasts about 10 seconds and then shuts off. So we'll re re remove power now and we will go have a look at the computer because I've had my Arduino connected here to the internal CAN network. And when we did that little power cycle here, I've just had Savvy CAN um, on the computer here just um, pick up the CAN messages. And we see over here, I don't know how this is going to come out on camera, but I can probably do a screen capture on this in another video. Um, there's quite a few CAN IDs, um, so we need to work through what they do. Now, that's all well and fine, you might say, but okay, so let's say that we can, you know, we, we can CAN. We can capture the CAN messages. Uh, but si simply playing them back to the the uh, power modules is not going to get anything for anything for us because in the condition that we have on the bench now, there's no mains power, there's no battery, there's no pilot signal, there's no CAN network from the car itself. So there, you know, the logic board and the power modules are probably saying, "Hey, wait a minute, you know, there's." I got a load of kind of problems, faults here, so I'm just going to go back asleep. Um, so that's not going to make the thing work. So the next phase for the charger is the following. We're going to make a little breakout board uh, that will plug into the 24-way JST uh, connector on the existing Tesla board. And have another JST 24-way socket to plug the tail into. We'll then hopefully be able to get somebody crazy enough to let me um, plug this into a live car. Uh, so, that, so that I can log not only the CAN messages but what the analog signals do. Um, and get a much better idea then about how the uh, internal communication between the logic board and the power modules work in this particular charger. So that's going to be a very simple little board that we're going to design uh, soon. And um, I've really then got to kind of reach out uh, to some people, to, to you guys also, uh, to see if there is somebody out there that would be willing to let me uh, run a test of this nature. Now, if we get to, to that stage, what I would then hope is that we can come along and uh, take our charger here, you know, put a dummy load on it, put mains power on, and play back those messages uh, that we capture from our working car and see if we can wake up the uh, power modules themselves. So that's where we're at with the charger. Um, so nothing really much else to report on this at the minute. I'm going to make that board. I'm going to reach out to some people I know. Ask you guys too um, if there is somebody out there that would, uh, you know, be crazy enough to let me log some data and measure some signals in their charger uh, when it's actually charging the car as normal. Now Tesla were fairly sneaky. In that there's a little reed switch um, mounted on the logic board and there's a magnet mounted on the lid of the charger uh, so that if you remove the lid of the charger it shuts itself down which kind of makes sense from a safety point of view so I'll need to bring a little magnet with me just to sit on the reed switch. Um, so that's it guys that's where we're at with the charger um, 
just to let you know what's going on there. So I hope you're enjoying all of these crazy Tesla videos. Um, don't forget to subscribe and leave me a like. Uh, if you would like to support these and other you know, open source projects that I'm doing, then please visit the link in the description to my uh, Patreon and consider making a do donation. Uh, the ultimate goal of this, of course, is to design a replacement for that Tesla logic board that kind of lets the charger work in a much more simplified manner. So you just, you know, program a voltage set point, uh, maximum current, uh, finish current, and you let the thing on and it just charges your battery and then shuts itself off. So, right, guys, that's it. We will see you in the next video. And um, happy... Tesla charging.